Yeah, I've been a, a vice president Eliza here. Thank you for joining us. It is May 17th, Tuesday, our regular time to join you all and to, to give our updates on this COVID-19 town hall update. So we know the numbers are low and, and looking good, but there's still uh, uh, important updates to be given out. So we have Dr. Jill Jim, Executive Director, Department of uh, Navajo Health, and also Dell with our epi team so again we're here uh, and, and president is uh, on the call but he's also got some uh, uh, graduation and some um, um, commitments uh, online as well so he'll be joining us shortly here whenever he can uh, squeeze in but uh, again may 17th thank you for joining us uh, as we do let's open up in prayer and then i'll give my my uh, segment and then uh, introduce dr jill jim god we thank you Bolney, God, that uh, today is uh, another day to bring news, good news, we pray, and uh, updates to the people of the land. We, we thank you for your provision, your protection, your healing, your solidarity, uh, joining the people together, Lord, uh, one mind, one accord to stay safe. And uh, we just, we give you praise for that and as we join today on this town hall update may your wisdom be with us may we extend that wisdom to the people that the people of the land may be blessed we thank you again god your preeminence and your 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 provision is astounding and we are thankful we are grateful uh, be with us on this call be with our people lord as they look to uh, open up and recover safely lord our economy our stores our businesses our general uh, feeling of uh, being safe here in the land father that this virus is is still here um it is still um, um we still need to be cautious lord and, but cautious but with not not with any fear father we, we give you this time be with us now in jesus name yeah God, amen and amen. So thank you for joining us again. Uh, we do have uh, uh, some vital news to give to you. Uh, I'll open up first, uh, firstly, and then um, if Jonathan Nez does not sh show up here, our president uh, who's displayed exemplary and uh, stellar leadership in this uh, mitigating this virus here in this pandemic, then uh, we'll uh, go to the, uh, Dr. Jill Jim here. So. But uh, real quick news, uh, the Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday authorized Pfizer, Bi uh, Pfizer BioNTech's COVID-19 booster shot for children ages 5 to 11. The booster dose is available to children five months after uh, completing their primary series of two shots there. Uh, normally, we give some general overarching uh, state news. Uh, in this case, Arizona does not have any new updates. and. The reporting mechanism, the reporting um, process in how the state's uh, departments of health have been reporting has been changed up a little bit. So we do uh, have uh, uh, st uh, numbers, I guess, that are that are uh, um, um, staggered and they're, they're um, uh, coming to us uh, in, in a little bit less frequent uh, mode. Um, total positive cases as of May 11th in the state of Arizona, in a state that's almost 7 million in population, 2 million. 30,925, so there's quite a, a few positive cases in the state. Uh, Apache County, a little bit closer to home, 22,540. Uh, Navajo County, 38,394. Again, these are as of May 11th, just a few days ago. And Coconino County, 44,091. That's in uh, the state of Arizona. Colorado, no new news to report, but um, their numbers are updated daily. So I guess as of yesterday, 1,411,558 in Colorado. As you know, in Navajo Nation, we do own uh, two sizable ranches in Colorado. So reporting uh, for the benefit of our employees that are housed there on the ranch hands there at uh, our Wolf Springs Ranch. New Mexico. Mexico Department of Health issues updated public health order. Under the order, masks are required in all healthcare facilities, nursing homes, community homes, and residential treatment centers. I can vouch for that. My uh, father is in a rehab, rehabbing after uh, uh, sustaining a broken 
uh, pelvis and uh, we have to have masks when we go visit and wear them all the time. And uh, so all the health facilities in New Mexico are observing that measure. It also still requires businesses open to the public and schools to report COVID-19 outbreaks. The only change from previous order is eliminating the mask mandate for correctional facilities. So there you have it, the latest from New Mexico. Total positive cases, 527,167. San Juan County, 40,977. And McKinley County, 26,021 there, the latest numbers in uh, New Mexico, our eastern neighbor there, and also uh, the counties that uh, are in uh, the Navajo Nation. Utah, Utah Governor Spencer Cox has tested positive for COVID-19, his office announced last Thursday. The governor took a test after developing a scratchy throat late Wednesday night, officials said in a statement. He plans to isolate for five days and wear a mask for 10 days. So prayers for Governor Spencer Cox. And I believe recently too, maybe three weeks ago or so, Lieutenant, Madam Lieutenant Governor Deirdre Henderson had also uh, tested positive. So I've seen some posts, she's back out and uh, hitting the, the trail. So uh, she's, she's fully recovered. Cox said he's been vaccinated and boosted. So far, I feel fine, he said in a statement, and our prayers are for his full recovery. And so he will bounce back. Uh, we prayerfully uh, submit. Uh, San Juan County, oh, wait, wait, uh, Utah, the total positive cases in Utah, almost hitting the million mark. This is as of uh, May 12th, 2022, 938,864 there. San Juan County, 4,004, and our own Utah Navajo Health System, 1,981. So there you have it. Uh, those are the latest numbers in what the pandemic and the numbers look like all around us. In closing, uh, increase your protection against COVID-19 and get boosted. If you're over 50 and have already been boosted, ask a healthcare provider if a second booster makes sense for you. So there you have it, the latest from Vice President Lizer here um, as my segment here. Um, we do, um, our, uh, also uh, waiting for our, our president, Jonathan Nez, to uh, get on the call with us, but we also have Dr. Va with us today. So we're going to uh, hand it over to our health professionals. Uh, I know there's uh, more information as this pandemic changes. There's new updates, uh, CDC hands down a new uh, update and new important information, but also here, what does the pandemic look like for us here? And so uh, our own Dr. Jill Jim, who's also displayed uh, stellar leadership in mitigating this virus here for the Navajo Nation. We appreciate her leadership and uh, look forward to hearing from her uh, every Tuesday morning. So Dr. Jill Jim, thank you again for all you do and have done and uh, yeah, continue to stay safe. Thank you, Vice President Nadal Kehat, for all you do, and thank you for the updates. And I think that a couple of weeks ago, as we were having, we've been having the, these town halls, and I appreciate your leadership and President for offering this to the Navajo people all the time. And sometimes what you get on the news or social media is sometimes very different. And so I'm glad that you and President are inviting us because we monitor the Navajo Nation's COVID status all the time. And several of um, Dell or several of our, my colleagues, Dr. Va and Dell are on here every single week to share this information. So as you're talking about some cases that you identified um, with the governor and stuff, and, and, and it's quite real, COVID is still here. And so I think we're gonna have to continue to do what we do and what we know is best. So. I just wanted to commend you for that and just for your father's safe recovery as well. So mm, um, thank you, Dr. Jim. And then today I just wanted to share some of the um the latest um guidelines that we issued out um and on the Navajo Department of Health webpage and in public health order number um, 2022-04-06, um, and this was the May 11, 2022, this is how we um, wrote the guidelines for this and wanted to provide this information. So there's nine pages, and I'm, I'm not going to sort through all of them, but I just wanted to show the public that 
there is a um, guideline for everything now that are in those public health orders. And in those public health orders, we mentioned like restrictions on flea markets, tour businesses, youth programs, traditional ceremonies, churches, in-person meetings and trainings, outdoor recreation events, gyms, wellness centers, recreation facilities, graduation events, and sport attendance. And those are all things um, that we have um, limits on. And But um, going forward, what we did is we established general guidelines to help the Navajo public understand what are some things that no matter what you do, if it's a public event, um, this is what just some quick reminders on just encouraging people to get vaccinated to make sure that you explain safety protocols and still to this day we recommend if you are sick and if you are need to be isolated or quarantined that um, limiting exposures at attending events is still recommended especially if you have um, covid like um, symptoms and that's what some people um often ask us is like well i don't know if i just have the flu or if i have um the allergies or whatnot so those covid like symptoms are still what we we suggest to make sure you're familiar with those and we all are and then if you're waiting for a test result continue to just wait until you're fully um receive your results and making sure that it's negative and then in any public event, what we're asking, if you're gonna to go to the fair this year, when they start happening, to practice the three Ws, wash your hands, wear your mask, um, follow the mask or um, accordance to what we have right now, indoor and outdoor masks are still required. And then just something that we never really thought of before. I mean, washing your hand and before COVID was important, just to make um, sure that you don't get sick or you don't have any sort of bacteria, especially after changing your changing a, a diaper or touching animals or taking care of someone sick. These are things that we normally did before and we just want to do those quick reminders and watching your distance again is still what we recommend. Getting your vaccine updated and then self-screening yourself is going to be very important. Um, we don't really um, have a requirement for temperature checks, but we know that you can self-screen yourself for COVID symptoms before attending an event and making sure you stay home. And then having a plan in place, no matter where you are, if you're hosting an event or you're attending an event and there is someone that has COVID just to make sure that you do report it um, for businesses and for schools. Um, and tribal programs, they, they're still reporting to the Health Command Center and then also making sure that um, the area gets properly disinfected and clean. Promoting a safe environment. So whatever, if you're attending church, like I said, you're at a school event or whatever, those situations are that you're still looking at, making sure there's enough hygiene supplies, there are signs posted to alert people to practice their three Ws and also Requiring staff to also self-screen um, any any individuals that are at your event should receive some sort of safety training um, and education related to COVID. And then as another area that we kind of recommend is if your water system has been shut down for a very long and continue to make sure that it operates. Physical distancing is always important wherever you're at in the graduation line. Um, when you're um, at the flea market or when you're at attending a youth league um, or an adult summer league event this summer, uh, I'm pretty sure those have started as well. Adjust seating to maintain distancing and, and households, make sure vendors are six feet apart. Also gathering outside as much as possible if the weather permits, if it's indoors, making sure that ventilation is a, there is ventilation through the building, windows and doors are popped open, making sure that there is a good um, HVAC system that's repaired and working. And then avoiding really enclosed areas is what we still recommend. So just being aware of your surroundings when you're out there, attending an event only not on the reservation, but while you're off the reservation, you might want to still consider those. And then cleaning frequently as well, as we mentioned through the pandemic, I'm making sure you have sanit you sanitize areas, you keep a log of it, especially if you're hosting a large event. And then things like microphones are things that you can kind of clean and disinfect on a regular basis. And then food and drinks are allowed in, in the areas that I mentioned now, like in in-person meetings, tents, 
um, wherever you're having an outdoor event, just making sure there's disposable items, limiting crowd, um, crowding as well, um, as much as possible and following the Navajo Nation food handler training and food service permit as well. If you're using a tent and canopy, canopy for revival or any other event, making sure that there's proper ventilation that is being used as well. And then over making sure that um, everyone complies with the, the guidelines that I'm talking about. Then everything else, we used to have two or three pages regarding churches. It's not the case. Just making sure people are um, have received safety and training and education for other houses of worship in the Navajo Nation, and then offering low risk activities, um, outdoor, sign in, hybrid, online services, or some options. And then for tour businesses, we recommend the same thing. Um, a lot of this, they have to comply with their reopening plan with the Division of Economic Development, and, and then also following all the other guidelines mentioned above. So um, this document is very useful if you have not seen it. And then we have an I a section for temporary food vendors, same thing, making sure they're following regulations and protocols. And then as I scroll down, we are looking at outdoor recreation events, just making sure that you're avoiding grouping, or you avoid grouping and you're dividing participants into smaller groups, especially if you're doing an event. And now that we have more um, uh, leeway for that. The other thing that's also listed on here is rodeos, and this was included in the last public health emergency order in regards to outdoor recreation guidelines, they've always included rodeos, trail rides, and other events so that there's a 50 person capacity for that. Then indoor training, food are allowed, making sure you bring your own hand sanitizer if you can, but also the host should be responsible for a lot of this and making sure that masks and hand sanitizers are still ex um, accessible. Youth programming, also same um, guidelines that are mentioned above, not a lot of um, changes from other areas. So as we move towards the next phase of the pandemic, there aren't a lot of changes. And I think when we look at traditional ceremonies, we have really haven't, we used to do public health messaging on this, but we actually have some guidelines in place, just addressing the same thing with the family pods, just seating, Ceremonies are strongly recommended outdoors, making sure that people aren't sick when they come to get a ceremony of, of any sort, and then uh, properly um, having utensil, making sure there's food prepared for the ceremony that people are not sick. And also if the food vendors are present, they follow the temp temporary food vendor section policy or recommendations and then cleaning and disinfecting recommendation and propping the windows and the doors as well. So and then gyms, wellness centers, and recreation facilities, same thing, monitoring the capacity limits, posting signage, having hand sanitizers, limiting indoor or fitness or exercise classes as well if there isn't a lot of ventilation. Um, outdoor group fitness classes are encouraged, and then clients and employees should limit sharing items as well. And so those are just the typical um, guidelines. And we have holiday gatherings that are coming up. And the 4th of July is one of them, Memorial Day is one of them. And the most important thing we try to encourage people to do is do outdoors. Make, and if you have test kits available, use them. And then we also have masks that we continue to um, have provided to the chapters. So go to your local chapter house to get a mask, a K95 or an N95 mask. And those were provided through the um, FEMA and also the COVID test kits, you can call your CH, um, local CHR office um, as well to get a COVID test kit. And so if you need to um, take precaution or either if you feel like you've attended a gathering where you put yourself at risk, um, those are options that you can do. But um, guidelines are here. And, then, and one important thing is if you're hosting, making sure you're not sick, making sure other people are not sick as well. So. Sports events, same guidelines from um, before, but really different um, areas for schools and then graduation events. So there's probably many of them that are going on and indoor and outdoor um, graduation is allowed. So hopefully people are celebrating safely and that, that parents and graduates are um, um, having their gatherings in a safe manner. 
Another one is the fair guideline and event guideline is issued as well. So if you look on the Department of Health webpage, you'll have um, the different events that usually happen at the fairs. And, and these events include um, everything from camping to carnivals to parades to powwows to rodeos, uh, Western dances, youth dances, pageants, mud bogging, everything that you see um, are mentioned in here as part of the fair guideline. And then the only thing that's very different from what I mentioned um, and is that the fair organ and our organizers are encouraged to conduct vaccine verification as well. And then all the basic guidelines that I have mentioned, I'm gonna skip this whole area because it's everything that I already had talked about. Nothing um, different except for there are some items on spectator and general um, guidance here. And then there is an area at the bottom if you are a fair coordinator or part of a committee, you would need to submit your reopening plan to the Division of um, Economic Development so that you can um, have your fair occur this year. So those are just some of the long guidelines I just wanted to share. And sometimes maybe we don't um, spend time going on to the web page to know more about these guidelines, but they're here. They still exist. Um, we are still um, living with COVID. Um, we still have to take a lot of precaution. And that means um, having accessible to activities um, safely on, on the Navajo Nation, and we can do that. And we have, so I encourage everyone to share the guidelines. And um, I'll stop there, Vice President. Um, I don't see um, President on the call yet, so I think we can turn to Dr. Ba. So Dr. Ba, thank you for joining us. And then I think that can be followed by Dell. Dr. Ba is with the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. So welcome. We can't hear you, Dr. Ba. I hope you all can hear me. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. I'm trying to figure out her audio. Um, hi everyone, my name is Bill. I'm with the technology team. And here's our uh, update as far as our COVID numbers over two weeks.
as I always do, I always try to acknowledge our technology tools. We are uh, compile all the numbers, every, every just to highlight some all of the from our novel episode. Cope, TGEN, our partners from the State Department of Health. So I would try to acknowledge this to them for uh, with the, the data uh, each and every day. Uh, this is our our recent business and trends over two years. Still here. Uh, just going over the red line. Our numbers do fluctuate quite a bit every day by the bar. They go up and down. Uh, very low. Sometimes it's a little bit higher. Um, so, but the red line captures the trends over. As you can see, I'll mention this. Uh, this low period here was about six uh, cases over, you know, like a moving average over a period back on uh, late March, early May, sorry, early April. And then to now we've been trending towards lower. Throughout, uh, we are uh, here at around 20. 20 cases. Uh, that's the highest we've been since uh, late March or early April. So we are, you know, seeing a little bit of an upward trend over a month and a half or so, which kind of reflects a seven day inspection. Being over one. Our threshold is right at one. So we are. And then case incidents across that location. Uh, over here on the box, there's 20 cases over a seven day period from May 6th to 12th. That puts a seven day case rate at 72 cases per 100,000 people, which is in the orange uh, level of our response, COVID response on the nation. And then on the map over here, uh, Kenyanta and Chile service areas are the two with the highest seven day case uh, rate range, being over 100 plus cases per 100,000, followed by 45 Asian South Asian uh, service areas, which are in the 50 to 99 seven day case rate range per 100,000. And then the latter column right here, Cuba, Wednesday, North Gallup, and all in the, the lower seven day case range for the thousand. So that's kind of the picture and the overall situation on the nation over a seven day period. Additional metric here the that base has capacity. We're at seven percent, uh, seven day, seven day test target. This also goes up, went up a little bit from six last week to seven. And then there are about, you know, testing is still going on across the nation. We're about 486 average daily tests conducted over. So there's a lot of testing still going on. And then core metric here is hospital capacity. Regular hospital beds is 63%. And ICU beds, 70%. Average daily occupancy for, for for that on the nation, and then our latest numbers for vaccine or vaccinations on the nation. Uh, this is for now, our nation only completing the primary series, which are the, the two doses, the first and second doses. Now at 125,706, and then the residents that are up to date, meaning they got the third. Shot for the first booster, um, eighty-four thousand nine hundred four. 
so about 57 percent of our network have completed the primary series 45 percent are up to date these are epic curves for for the blue line is black the orange line is avalanche uh, we are increasing this. Um, I'd say probably with almost two months now, uh, time period across the United States, um, and we are in Navajo Nation, we are still um, also seeing a little bit of a uh, up in cases in the next year. This is seven day case rate comparison between and the 50 states and a couple of jurisdictions. The yellow bar here is the nation where 40th position compared to the 50. And then the red bars are uh, our borders, Colorado, Utah, so, um, that's the seven day case rate uh, picture. Here's a seven day case rate picture across the US. And just within our region, Colorado is seeing an up in as well. Uh, Utah and New Mexico and Arizona with the lowest seven day case rate within our region. A lot of the COVID cases are over on the East Coast, the Northeast Coast of the region, and up here in the Nevada, the Midwest uh, section. The west, the west and north uh, west coast. Community transmission across the nation. I'll just focus on our in our region by counties. You know, in Arizona, Apache, Co uh, Navajo, and Coconino counties, all within the orange for our COVID transmission. And New Mexico is McKinley County and uh, San Juan County. Uh, in New Mexico with the orange and yellow with moderate to severe. Then up in Utah, this um, San Juan County in Utah is red, so high COVID in our region. This is uh, from last week, COVID strain surveillance on Navajo Nation. Uh, we haven't updated this yet from last week, so uh, the numbers uh, remain the same from last week, just that we are still seeing, we have detected uh, the BA2 and its sublineages on, on the Navajo Nation. We went from 23% from last week. So that's uh, the only, really the highlight uh, of the latest numbers here. CDC variant profile across the US, again, the, the BA2.12.1. It go up from 43% to now about 48. So the BA2.12.1 is on the upward trend across the US. Uh, that's the, the highlight of this um, um, variant profile for, for the United States. Five new chapters made to the high risk uh, chapter list here. The Chen Lee, Ganado, Loop, Nash Chibi, and Saley Wheat Fields. And then our Risk level assessment here. Uh, as I mentioned, we continue to fluctuate as far as numbers. Last week we were yellow, now we're over in orange based on our seven day case rate. There was a plus 32% change from last week. And we are an orange level that's substantial covert risk and transmission. As I mentioned, we've detected the both the BA2 and the BA2121 on the Navajo Nation. Our lab test positivity uh, continues you know, remain low, even though it's going up a little bit, but it's still low and stable at now 7% in our hospital capacity at 63 uh, and 76%. And we are um, in the orange level uh, currently for cases and hospital capacity, and the lab-based testing is uh, in yellow. We're in the orange level, and I'm going to 
stop here and go back to see if Dr. Vala has fixed their audio. Dr. Vala? Hi, good morning. There you go. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much, Dell. I appreciate the patience. Um, and to everyone out there, so sorry about the audio issues. Um, I am joining this call from Chinle Service Unit, um, and I am joining on behalf of our IHS team. Um, some updates I would like to provide is that we do continue to work with our Navajo Nation partners, um, such as my co-lead, Del Yazian, and of course, Dr. Jim, um, and OPVP on our COVID-19 response, focusing on COVID-19 control activities. As Dr. Jim noted earlier in her talk, um, is that we are at a different phase in our pandemic where we know what we can do um, to prevent COVID-19, to prevent serious illness, um, and what we can do to mitigate or to um, lessen those risks, as well as what we can do to prevent spread. And so that's what I'm going to focus on today. Um, Something I do want to highlight that you know our response at this time. What can you know? What can we do to control COVID-19? Right? We have vaccines and boosters. We have rapid tests, home tests, and we have treatment. Um, and we have an excellent team um, that's made up of IHS, Navajo Nation partners, to help with monitoring, monitoring and tracking um, COVID-19 that helps inform all of those control measures. Um, and so a common question that we do get is testing. These home test kits, can we rely on them? The answer on that is yes. And so we, as a unified team, continue to try to make sure that there is accessible testing out there, that folks on the ground, communities on the ground can go to a facility and pick up a home test kit. Um, the home test kits are really effective at telling you, are you infected right now? Are you contagious right now? As Del was saying is that, yes, cases are going up, and this latest version of Omicron or this latest version of this COVID-19 virus is very, very contagious. Um, and so what can you do to help um, mitigate that is test. Rapid tests, they work. So, for example, if you're going to a gathering or if you are symptomatic, go ahead and test yourself with that home test kit. It will tell you, are you infected right now? And so if it comes back positive, whether or not you're symptomatic, don't go to that gathering. If, if, if you are symptomatic and comes back positive, guess what? We treat that as a true positive. All facilities across Navajo Nation treat a home test kit as a true positive. If you are positive and symptomatic, please call your nearest service facility or nearest healthcare facility because they can connect you to life-saving treatment. Um, we do have treatment available across Navajo Nation. Um, the the first-line treatment for this current variant of Omicron um, is Paxlovid. It is a pill. Um, and so if you are symptomatic, you tested positive, go ahead and call your nearest healthcare facility and they can connect you um, to treatment if you are eligible. Um, and like I said, we currently have the pill. Um, we have Paxlovid. Um, and then if that is not the right medication for you, there are others, such as IV infusions as well. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that everybody on this call joining us this morning understands that. So don't hesitate to report your positive home test results. We treat that as a true positive. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight is that we know that boosters work. You know, right now across Navajo Nation, we know that of all ages, zero on up, more than 70% have received at least one vaccine. Um, as Dell noted earlier, you know, close to 70% have completed their primary series. And so they got two out of two doses of Moderna or two out of two doses of Pfizer, or they got one out of one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We also know that about 45, you know, about 45% or about close to half of those um, all ages, zero on up or up to date. What that means is that you completed a primary series um, and you got a booster when you were eligible. The data tells us that boosters work. Boosters prevent hospitalizations, they prevent severe illness. Um, 
with this current variant, we do understand that, you know, that it's very contagious um, and that some may experience what we call a breakthrough infection. And what that means is that they were vaccinated and boosted, but they also happened to get COVID-19. That is expected. The purpose of these vaccines and boosters is to prevent serious illness and to prevent hospitalization. And so if you um, haven't gotten vaccinated yet, please start that series. Please go ahead and get a vaccine. We are recommending the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. Under very certain circumstances, you might um, need a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But for the most part, we prefer um, a Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. If you haven't completed your vaccine series yet, come back and complete it. And if you're eligible for a booster, please come back and get your booster. If you're 50 and older, you may be eligible at this point, actually 50 and older, you are eligible for a second booster. Um, and so please come back and get those boosters. We know those boosters help prevent um, a huge increase in hospitalizations across the U.S. as well as here in Navajo Nation. Um, if you're symptomatic and you have a home test kit, please test yourself. If it's positive, please call your nearest facility because you are eligible for treatment and we continue to work together to make sure that treatment is um, is available across Navajo Nation. Um, and that is it for my update. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful day.